folks, welcome back to another video. Uh, it's it's been a while since um, since I've done one of these, and that's mostly because I've uh, I've been quite unwell, uh, and I'm st I'm still not close to 100% fit, as you might be able to hear. But um, I, I can't sit still for too long, uh, <laughs> so yeah, here we are. So just to say. To everybody that's been uh, wishing me well and sending me lovely messages uh, thank you thank you it, it, it means the world it really does uh, for those curious um, I've had kidney stones uh, quite big kidney stones they were nine mil stones I've currently got a stent in my kidneys down the right hand side uh, that's causing me a great deal of pain and blood loss uh, through most of the day um, I'm gonna leave the descriptions of blood loss there because it would very quickly go into a state of too much information um, but yeah so there that is that's where I've been um, I thought we'd uh, we'd come back with this video in the meantime to address uh, a couple of concerns a couple of comments that have uh, arisen um, a, a few times um, and comments that were held for review by YouTube so it, it would take a while before I saw them anyway um, and that is with this kind of uh, analysis video to simply for me to simply shut up and get on with it right uh, if that's what you're after then stop the video right now and go go look for another video because that's not what this is that's not what this is about in these analysis videos that I do I want to try and give you as much information as possible in order to help you gain more awareness of, of how to read a person, of how to critically analyze somebody's behavior uh, properly and without any biases. Um, and the next that, uh, that has arisen is the idea of, uh, of research and whatnot into a case, which given my day job, uh, I spend time researching the cases that, I'm, that I work and preparing for uh, the lessons that I give and the, the businesses that I have to talk to and train to be able to do this for themselves. And it all starts with that same idea of preventing your emotional biases clouding whatever it is that you see. There's, there's a lot of dissonance amongst uh, a lot of the commenters in terms of, oh, it's this or it's that or it's the other. So my, my, my attempt with the filming of these is to stay out of the way of all unnecessary detail so I can focus on that which matters which is purely the behavior that I'm reading and the details that I'm observing and getting the information from what goes over that I think is lost on a lot of people that maybe haven't watched uh, a number of my earlier videos which is fair enough you're not encouraged to do so uh, I mean do it if you want it certainly helps me but uh, that, that's that's neither here nor there. Um, it's that idea of context, right? Context comes in the shape of more information, more confirmed details that create a bigger picture. I went through a period at the start of all of my early clips by showing what I'm saying in a very roundabout way is that we have uh, a low degree of evidence for all of this Netflix miniseries that we're doing is we are watching these videos through the eyes of a documentary filmmaker, right? So this is already through somebody else's bias in terms of what would make an interesting narrative to watch. When you're solving a case, it's an entirely different kettle of fish altogether. As anybody that's ever read another person in a real life scenario will know that it is never as simple as a equals b but let's not forget at all through doing this this is a video you know we've we've got the chance to do this with uh, with pause with rewind with slow motion that doesn't exist in real life we're not involved in the investigation um and you know, there's only so much that we, the ignorant public, uh, are allowed to know. Let's not forget that magical C word, context. 
my thoughts are solely on this video and let's not forget that word that buzzword that we could emblazon onto our minds context right because from from our position we have a cripplingly low level of information with which to gain a more grander picture so all we're looking to do is make our observations and confirm or deny that which we can see based upon more context that's been provided now you look at this case here and one of the things that's come up a number of times uh, for people that have sent, been good enough to send me the messages to do so is that it wasn't chalk as in uh, draw, drawing chalk uh, for hopscotch and the like in the backyard uh, the dog's name is chalk brilliant well that raises um, more questions regarding the dog's behavior the dog's reactions towards um, the owners themselves you can learn a lot about uh, somebody from how their dog is and how their dog reacts around people and strangers and the the relationship of care that a dog apologies about that the uh, the law of sod would dictate that um, <laughs> that I would receive a telephone call during this it was a uh, a toss up as to whether I was just going to wait to do it or not, but uh, that was that was my doctor's calling. Um, but that's that's for another. We, we're talking about the dog. I mean, I, I think it was Bill Murray that said it the most succinctly, is that um, I would never trust a human that doesn't like a dog, but I would always trust a dog that doesn't like a human, right? And that's not to say that. Um, there's anything untoward with uh, the behavior of their dog specifically that's gone on but you can learn a lot about how this uh, this animal behaves in in a domestic situation right their, their behaviors <coughs> are picked up from their surroundings so you can learn a lot about that it'd be nice to see um, a, a, a clip somewhere I, I, I don't know if this even exists but it, it would be nice to see a clip of of the dog in the house or on walks or something along those lines just to get an idea for the way that um, being cared for relationship would play out right but that also raises further questions about the backyard um, in, in terms of uh, any play patterns um, there would certainly be a, a degree of um, uh, debris detritus left behind um, one of the people uh, before was kind enough to mention that uh, forensics didn't start with low card I, I, I knew that I, I don't know where it started w uh, with off the top of my head but I only mentioned low card obviously because he was known as the French Sherlock Holmes but there's that low cards exchange principle um, in terms of the action leaving um, leaving some form of remnants of, of exchange you know the detail of if I were to pick up this lens case for example and then the lens case were to be found there's some remnants of the fact that I had touched it on there same could be said for the dog being in the backyard raises all sorts of important questions uh, that have yet to be answered to my knowledge obviously I've been out of the loop for a while um, in terms of uh, the open gate and the dog's reaction to an outside whether he's an off the lead kind of dog this sort of thing but for today um, I've been sent footage of of the birth mother who is uh, Ryan Dean and um, we're, we're just gonna have a look at that we're just gonna have a look at that uh, I've not yet watched it and you're gonna be watching these as every sort of body language video that I do the watching of them will be the first time I, I'm watching the footage with you, right? So this is how we get an honest and confirmable feedback of the observations that you've made. I'll give you an example in terms of one of the cases I'm, I'm working on uh, through uh, the company that we've just set up, me and uh, a few other top coppers from around the world, uh, ProCypher.co, if you want to if you want to look at that online. Um, and it's basically, uh, how can I tell you without the NDA getting involved it's basically a CCTV CCTV footage review of um, a high net worth individual who it it seems as though there are a team of people about to 
uh, cause his or her domicile some issues okay and uh, when I'm sent the footage initially I'm asked for my review and uh, my analysis of it there's no conferring there's no discussion of of outside forces out you know in, in terms of context or what he thinks or what they've been told prior to this it's a case of looking at the information what do you see what can you confirm what what leads does you know uh, arise out of this for us to pursue and then based upon the outside knowledge afterwards can we confirm or deny so that gives strength to this idea takes away from this idea like we learned with the dog and this this analysis moving forward so i hope that provides you with um with a little bit more context uh in terms of how to properly uh, analyze footage let's not forget that even now with this being there's there's two videos that i've been sent of uh, ryan dean they're both very short uh, but even with this that's still only three videos that we well that i have um within this within this saga so far so it's by no means a, a level of evidence that should ever be considered um, as as serious, you know, unless you work on the case directly, you're directly involved, you're always going to be behind, you know. And there is that very nature with this being as incendiary a case as what it is that people are going to jump to conclusions over their responses to whatever biases they have. You know, whether that be the biases of parents or the biases of this person or the biases of why I'm even talking about it, you know, that's that sort of thing. Um, that will colour the way that you see the information that's presented to you. So we need to do our best as people readers to stay away from that so we can take the evidence, the information for exactly what it is. And if that changes moving forward based upon new information, that's better, right? But let's not forget that each one of the reads within these videos is only ever based on these videos that we're seeing and nothing more. Um, apart from, because uh, I've got coming up, uh, I've done a review of uh, uh, Elisa Lam and the Cecil Hotel. Um, or Cecil Hotel, if you're across the pond. Um, I've only ever heard it said as Cecil in the UK. Um, but yeah, I've, I've been aware of, of the uh, of the elevator footage of that for a good number of years. So I've, I've seen that a few times. Um, but yeah, so with that in mind, to please uh, some of you out there, I shall shut up and get on with it. Uh, so this first one looks as though it's from a uh, a news interview. And let's let's have a little look see. They've been missing since 5 p.m. yesterday, which is I don't understand. 5 p.m. yesterday. We've at least got a time frame. So this video is quite old now. I don't understand. <laughs> Dean says that imagining her boys are gone is a nightmare. She says that she misses them every day and is heartbroken that she isn't involved in their lives. Dean hopes that her children are okay and that she will be able to see them again. If they find my kids, can they just give them back to me? Whatever I have to do to work on it to get them. I'm okay, so what we've got, what we've got the um, initially is um and perhaps rightly so uh, as well she's coming from a uh, a place of guilt a place of regret uh, a place of uh, virtual shame enough to if we rewind it back whoa that's a spelling mistake ryan bean i thought her name was ryan dean it's quality reporting um but if you look at the uh, the heavy eye blocking motion um you could almost be forgiven for being called in calling her tears into question right but there they are there there's no doubt that the the heightened emotional state well there's no doubt in my mind that the high the heightened emotional state is that of a genuine one but i believe it to be more 
on the side of 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 guilt of shame of regret over over actions that she's taken because um you know her first thing after the you know the primary objective of getting the boys back is that i can do this i can do that you know i i can uh, i'll do whatever it takes to um to to get them back which which you know is is fair enough but if you explore that on a on a reflexive rationale, the other side of things for you to say, I'll do whatever, means that you've first done wrong. So we get a, a confirmed level of, of guilt and shame with regard specifically to her actions prior to this. <laughs> Head down, uh, yeah. I don't understand. <laughs> Dean says that imagining her boys are gone is a nightmare. She says that she misses be. them every day and is heartbroken that she isn't involved in their lives. Dean hopes that her children are okay and that she will be able to see them again. If they find my kids, can they just give them back to me? Whatever I have to do to work on it, to get them. I'm, I have a home, I have a car, I have a job. There you go. I have a home, I have a car, I have a job. So if we're exploring that reflexive rationale there again, uh, these may have been elements that she didn't have before and uh, uh, have led her to make some, some poor decisions, let's say, <laughs> glaze over that, which have led to the, the children being removed from her care. But when we are, we've all cried at some point in our lives, everyone, un unless you're a robot. So the, the nature of the tear removal is is a reflection of of discomfort's probably the wrong word, but in, to avoid irritation for the necessary glands that are that are uh, around your eyes, not to bore you with the uh, the anatomy. But that's why when you cry and you, you're constantly rubbing your eyes, that's why they get sore as a result. So this is a natural reaction to do, but to to keep it there and to continually rub them in and moisten them is re it steps into blocking behavior because it's an unnecessarily long uh, period of time for that particularly particular behavior so you have to wonder why somebody would do something like that in that 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 is another observation that would fit in the world of of guilt and shame hanging your head uh, in your hands right so that's the primary place of where she's coming from there's no doubt that there's a great sense of, of fear for the safety of them but uh, it's it's forcing her to have her own uh, sensibilities as a mother questioned you know which is hard for anyone to do regardless of what you've done in the past you know to take that sort of microscopic light and shine it on yourself is a challenge I have money is nothing to provide God, I'm terribly unprofessional. Um, but yeah, I apologise. My, uh, my, my case is still ongoing, so I get a lot of calls given the complications that are going on. But yeah, let's keep going. I don't come... I come from a good background, as you can see. And I don't understand. I just want my babies. If they find them, just give them back to me, please. That's all I want. Now, see, that's that's going into a step of of force to keep it going, almost. That's all I want. If they just find them, I just want my kids back to me. Twenty-three. We see. I don't know how much time's gone by in terms of that uh, cross div cross dissolve there. Because if, it, if there wasn't a lot of time gone in between, then her breathing shift indicates that the emotional state shown prior to that was fake. Um, but that's, that's something that only whoever edited this video can confirm or deny. Because there's no, there's no way for your breathing to change that quickly. Um, let's play that again. If you listen, just listen. Please. That's all I oh, want. Yeah. 
Don't just fire them, I just and then it was lowered to down to control. did speak to the biological father of the two missing toddlers who declined interviews and wished to keep their names private. If you have any information regarding this case, call Cal City Police at 76. Right. Okay, so that kind of chest breathing is very difficult to fake. So her stress levels that she's going through at the moment, they they are they are there. I I don't believe there's there's a reason to question them uh, at this stage, right? You you see it a lot in children who uh, who f lose control, uh, and then I, I I can't fake it. It's yeah, it, it it starts to become almost convulsive uh, in the chest, right? And you can see from the indentations of the mask when it's going in uh, as well, just how heavily struck that breathing is to try and gain your breath back. There you go, trying to control, trying to self-soothe. Brian, to say this is uh, emotional is an understatement. How do you even express what you're feeling in words? <laughs> To come back up. Of course it. I mean, of course it hurts. Of course it hurts. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Clearly quite, clearly quite stressed. Clearly experiencing a lot of emotions all up in the air at this stage. You can see, you can see that there has been tears there from how they reflect in the light. There you go. That that's that's back to the blocking behaviour again. You know, in terms of you know the, the the shame, the guilt, regret. Initially, when she was cleaning her eyes at the start, it was here. It was here. And how we do it? It's it's this. It's this. It's fingers. It's wiping. It's never fully controlled coverage. Coverage is into blocking behaviour. Blocking. Why do we block? Because there's things we don't like. There's things we don't want to get involved in. Um, and that's that's what we're seeing here. She's got to do this interview, but it's calling into question things of how she feels about herself. So moving forward, right, if she goes on to talk about, like, uh, if and when the kids come back, uh, what she can do for them now, how, the, how where she is at the moment has changed, like she said before, with the, with the car in the house and whatnot. If there's anything along those lines regarding herself, we'll know how inwardly focused uh, she is on her own perceived shortcomings. Even before this, I'm not a bad mother, right? There we go. And look, the, whether that's a, a uh, I don't know, it, it could be a misshapen eyelash in the wind, but it certainly looks like a tear. So there's, there's, no, there's no doubt uh, at all that what's going on does come from a, a genuine place, but it's definitely focused more on, more on herself uh, at this stage uh, in, in terms of those feelings of regret towards what she did previously um or what she did currently you know that's that's up in the air at this stage but what we can see uh, if you look at the way her hair is blowing backwards she's standing facing the wind and uh it's a bit of a weird for instance but i don't know if you've ever cried facing the wind but it does dry the dry the areas under your eyelids out quite quickly which is why you'd be rubbing more often why there's a higher chance of them becoming sore um, and the like and why you not see you, why you might not see as much moisture
That's harder. What did the parents tell you? <laughs> they said that she said she was wrapping gifts and she left my two kids out in the backyard because she didn't want them to see the gifts. But she didn't let the other kids out wherever the other kids. Why my two just go back there? Well, that, that bit's already cleared up uh, from before that they were the only two kids in the house. At night, she said it was dark. And it's cold right now, so I know it's cold then. So I don't believe it. Night. So. Makes me wonder if they have a, like a porch light or something, or how much light is given to the backyard from how bright the house is. Yeah? It's definitely a, a, a question that's raised um, when you when your kids are outside in the dark, or when someone you're taking care of is outside in the dark, when your dog, uh, you know, is is outside in the dark, you want to know how much how much light is being shed. Definitely something to think about moving forward. When did she tell you this? Where were you when she told you this? I just came here 45 minutes when nobody was here. 45 minutes to an hour, and we knocked on the door, and it took them a minute to come, and he came out. And he want to say he's sorry and all that. I just don't feel in my heart that I, it's something. They're not. <laughs> Do you have a relationship with these parents? No. See, that's, that's not a good place for you to be making critical decisions, given the public domain that it's in, right? When you're, when you're reacting that emotively, you can't critically analyse the evidence. I'm, I'm sure... Well, you know, I'll speak from personal experience. We've, we've, we speak from personal experience, and then I say we've, I've, I've been in those situations, and I'm sure quite a number of people have as well, um, where you've thought along the lines of, oh, they would never lie to me. Uh, and it turns out they do. Uh, and you miss this because you're not prepared. So that's, n that's not a good place to be making critical judgments because you'll, your, your perception is skewered based upon whatever emotions you're feeling at a heightened state at that time. Well-documented psychological evidence. I don't know them. And I know I told them my last visit, when the visit prior to that, I said, when these kids used to be with her, they were fatter. My kids are skinny. They, they used to cry when they picked them up, like, at the end of the visit. They... They weren't dressing them, they weren't cutting their hair when I, I still had rights, so I asked them, can they cut their hair? Their hair wasn't being cut. <laughs> I just know. Okay, so for, for that to have um, its particular potency uh, in terms of a critique of how the Wests are with them, you would need a time frame. You would need a time frame with that. Um, in terms of like how many times they were left without clothes or uncut hair or you know not clean this sort of thing um, because the the nature of things being taken out of context is what they are it could just be an isolated incident yeah whatever whatever extenuating circumstances there are for that incident who knows but in in terms of isolation if you've got kids you know that that happens from from time to time. They'll they'll wind up being messy, and you could see somebody knocking at your door, uh, and see the kids, you know, maybe a postal worker or something. And as your kids walk past, all mucky and messy, and the postal worker thinks, "Boy, these these kids are a mess." That take that taken out of context is a prime example of of exactly what we're doing here. So, in order for that to have any credence, you need a time frame on it. I know my kids, and they, they was not happy with them. I felt it at business. I told them. I told them. I told them. <laughs> so you've been visiting these? There you go. She's stepping into forcing no, the stage to keeping it going again. Visit, they were because the breathing her, drops again switched, quickly. They switched, sorry, they switched it to them, and they didn't even barely want to talk to me at business. They didn't really want to let me. I'm like, can I please just, I'm not a bad mother. It was a mishap of what happened. Can y'all just let me still be in their life? They denied Christmas gifts and everything from me and my mother. They were adopted um, in 2019. Denying Christmas gifts is a bit of a dick move. Um, 
just throwing that in, in as an opinion more than anything. I don't know. I didn't know anything after 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 the last court date. I didn't know anything. Ryan, going back to your interaction with the foster parents, anyone looking at you could tell you're clearly devastated. When they're telling you this, what kind of sense did you get? Any emotion on their end? On her, she's too nonchalant. And on him, he's trying to plead to me and say sorry, but it, I just feel safe. And you saw the police cars out here investigating. Yes, I saw that through the AV yesterday. Change again, to... change again, right? Changing breathing patterns quite quickly. Difficult to come down from those levels. That's why I'm saying she's stepping into to, to keeping it going longer than, than what is necessary uh, in, in terms of genuinely felt continual states. Um, but yeah, a, a, again, making a, a formal assessment when you're in that kind of heightened emotional state is something that you're never going to be able to do well. You're never going to be able to do well. You'll pick up on um, one or two things that serve to only confirm the reality that you want to believe at that particular moment, right? So when you're asking for somebody's sense or what did they feel, what do you know in your heart, that's that's immediately a question that's designed to get at uh emotiveness right you, your your emotive drive to answer these questions isn't coming from a place of uh, of 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 reason that's that's based upon detail for exactly what the detail is it doesn't need to be um clouded in this way so whether that's the 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 interview of the journalist asking these kind of questions specifically to get that kind of a response or not is uh is up for debate. Say that a mother has the best intuition of her kids. What do you think happened? That question makes me as close to certain as I can that that's the fault of the interviewer then, trying to ask specific questions to get a particular kind of response. If you want something, um, something uh, large, in terms of a display or meaning or potency again you ask that kind of a question when uh, when a mother's uh, skills are called into question it's that's an incendiary response when uh, you know you you talk about that kind of lioness quality that a mother always knows best um well, clearly something's happened where she's gone through a moment where she didn't know best because they wouldn't have been removed from her care if they if she did so, to ask that kind of a question makes me think that the journalist knows exactly what he's doing to try and achieve the desired effect of words that are said specifically for an outcome. They do something. I feel like they did something, and they know something. They did something, and I feel my kids is somewhere around here. I can feel it. And I feel like they're in the house, and I feel like they did something. I really do. It's like if you uh, if you know somebody who believes themselves uh, to be very strong, like a like a gym guy, they they work out all the time, and whatever. And you want to make a point and have them agree with you. You uh, like what have I got in here? You like you take my guitar for example, uh, and I want to have them uh, agree with this point. I would say. Yeah, that's the kind of guitar that you see in a, played in a lot of gym music and a lot of these videos because it can accurately show off show off the guns as you're playing it, right? And that's that's something that all good quality gym guys know. Am I right? That's that's gonna in, enforce, you know, uh, coercion to for them to agree, and it's gonna enforce them to go to a place of uh, emotion that appeals to what they think. Uh, is a representation of themselves. For them to deny that, they're going to have to deny that they are a good, solid gym person. For her to deny the ability to answer that question, she's going to have to deny that a mother knows best. Uh, did they tell you they called, they called police for the missing children, or did someone else call The news said that they... And there we go. 
that's the end of that one so i'm speaking to uh a few lovely people behind the scenes in regard to this and um we're hoping to put our heads together to to gain something further um, from the information that's been developed as a result as I say I've been out of action for quite some time with all of this that's going on I mean look at this this is cool uh, I've even been using this to get around but I have to keep it nerdy it's uh, it's got flames on the bottom it's uh, it's my house MD walking stick uh, but yeah um, this I is it's sort of a <laughs> Uh, out, of, out of illness kind of video. I wanted to really take some time to explain how you how you have to, in my opinion, um, critically analyze a situation properly in order to try and gain all of the information that is being shown to you without the enforcement of any kind of particular bias that you've got up until that stage. Right. So we, we can learn a little bit more about the West's displays as a result. Um, uh, I don't, I don't personally believe that there's, there's enough at the moment to make me doubt the fact that they are hiding something, but what they are hiding could be a number of things. Could be a number of things. Uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be uh, about, about the children, could be about their relationship struggles that I believe are going on as well. Uh, but yeah, it could be about a number of things. So yeah, guys. Um, Thank you for, for joining me again. Um, if you took anything away from that in terms of uh, a nugget of information with regard to how you can critically analyze situations yourself, that's that's pleasing for me. At the end of the day, with, with these YouTube videos, I'm not looking to try and uh, do, th do this as a job. I have a job that I love and I get to do what I'm good at all day every day I make these videos because they interest me and I like to get to know you guys I I like to start dialogues on topics I like to learn more about how you see the world and how you see these things that we're talking about as well get different viewpoints we learn more at the end of the day right we learn more at the end of the day that way so uh, if that's something that you feel like being a part of don't forget to subscribe to the channel um, new podcast episodes on Fridays I haven't uploaded the video version yet uh, of last Friday's episode, so that'll be... Uh, I'm, I'm trying to keep up to date with all this, but I'm not moving very quickly at the minute. Um, so yeah, a couple of videos that are coming soon as well. Um, we've got the Cecil Hotel, we've got some Michael Jackson, um, uh, Neverland uh, observations to go through, Murder in the Outback uh, as well, and uh, I'm also going to bring back the... Uh, the, uh, the assessments of things like uh, Sherlock and Psych and The Mentalist and all of these other uh, really popular things just to show how you can apply these techniques for yourself uh, in everyday situations. I will talk to you soon and I hope you're all staying safe and well out there.